Hi, this is Matt Treyhouse with Western Rivers Fly Fisher. And we're going to do another fly demo today. Today's fly will be a green drake nymph, uh, basically similar to the green drake merger I did. Um, it's a bent shank hook, about a size 10 or a size 12. Uh, it's kind of a bushy little guy. It's relatively easy to tie, um, and it's a good fishing fly. It's done well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting a, a tungsten 3.2 or a 4 millimeter bead on the hook. Um, by the way, there have been some requests for pattern sheets, so at the end of this I will have a pattern sheet for you guys. Um, but I'm going to slide that onto the hook, assuming my fingers still work. Maybe, maybe not. Right, let's just do this the easy way, theoretically. Chase this bead around and bore everybody to death. Okay, now I'm going to drop it into the vise here. I've already debarbed the, the hook. Um, I'm just using basic neutral thread. I'm not real particular about thread choices most of the time. It's just a matter of you deciding what you want to do with it. So, I've got, I caught my green drake emerger. I have three different colors of ostrich that I'm going to use as the body and a little bit of a wire rib. I'm going to use a chartreuse wire rib on this. I kind of like the little bolder color hiding within all that dark stuff that I'm about to put on it. And most green drake nymphs have kind of a mottled look to them, so I use more than one color of ostrich. Basically, I have a brown, a tan, and an olive ostrich curl. You can also use gray. Just depends on how dark or light your local green drakes are. I mean, there's some differences in species in certain areas and so on, and just individual variations. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the ostrich curl, I'm going to tie it in towards the back so that the tail extends about a half an inch past the bend of the hook. And again, this is just your standard curved style nymph hook. You could use a 200R, a 5212, there's a whole bunch of options. Just depends on what size and what shape you want. So we're going to make a couple of tight wraps right in one particular location. Then we're going to pull the ostrich out of the way. We've already laid a wire rib down. Um, and then I'm going to take a bit of a shaggy type nymph dubbing. Um, this is going to be a little bit of an underbody just to get the fly proportions right so that the fly tapers from front to back. Um, in theory, you don't need to do this, but I've found that my drake nymphs look a little skinny if I don't dub a little underneath the body. And so we'll just start that towards the back. We're going to go to about the two-thirds point on the fly. Like that. And then I'm going to actually wind the thread back through the body. Again, this is going to get all hidden anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. I just want that taper, the shape, to be right. Now I'm going to take my tying thread, and I'll try to show you this. I'm going to wrap it around the hurl, or the hurl I'm going to wrap around the thread is probably a better way to put it. This makes it into a little bit of a rope. It makes it really easy to handle the ostrich, and it very rarely breaks. And then we're going to advance that forward, palmering it, kind of folding the hackles back and out of the way. So you get a nice shaggy dub body. Get it to that two-thirds point, and then untwist it. One of the advantages of twisting it around the thread is that the whole thing won't spring apart when you're done, theoretically. And I'm going to grab it as usual with my tying technique, most of the time I trap the material once, a couple of turns in front, and then wrap it again. Okay, so at this point we've got the bead floating, we've got the basic body shape done. Now I'm going to cut a strip of fin skin. This is olive speckled fin skin. Um, just happens to be what I'm using today. I also like to use clear model fin skin. Clear is actually probably my favorite because you can use any color with it. Um, and just let it take on the predominant body tones, but in this case, this guy's a little bit on the olive side, so we're going to make it olive. I'm going to trim a thin skin strip that's about a quarter of an inch wide, approximately, into a little bit of a point. And this is going to be the uh, wing case on the drake nymph. So I'm just going to tie it down on the top of the hook shank. Couple of turns, make sure that it stays centered up. 
just like that. And then once again, we're going to take some of that shaggy nymph dubbing. This is, in this case, it's uh, emergence dubbing, a gray olive, could be a brown olive, could be an SLF. There's a lot of different types. Um, anybody who knows me well enough knows that I'm not really particular about it's got to be this kind or that kind of dubbing. It just needs to look kind of like what I want it to look like. Um, there's a lot of great brands out there. so and We're just going to dub a heavy thorax, a little ball. And then I'm going to whip finish at this point and I'm going to trim the thread off and we're going to move in front of the bead. I'm going to make a little wing case and some legs, but I'm going to separate those two steps. So I forced the bead back onto that shaggy little bit of dubbing there and start my thread again. Again, I just chose a neutral tone thread. It doesn't really need to be any particular flavor, olive or gray or something that kind of matches the body tone of the fly. Okay, now I'm going to use a spay plume, and I've prepared this spay plume already. Basically, they come as long feathers like this. What I'm going to do is we're going to split a small portion of the spay plume away from itself. Spay plume is just a small piece of ostrich. It's like a mini ostrich roll like that. Uh, now this is a little uneven, so I'm going to peel a couple of feathers back from there, or fiber back. Okay, so we have this. It's kind of split out like we would a wet fly hackle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and lay it on top of the, the bead. And I'm just going to make a couple of loose wraps over the top of it. And then I'm going to pull the body of the feather forward to a point where the legs are about a half an inch long or so, and they're fairly even, then I'm going to take the thin skin, pull it over the top, splay out the legs, and this one's a little uneven, so I'm going to give it a little tug, there we go, a couple of turns, and then I can just go ahead and trim the whole shooting match back, theoretically. Uh, this has got a little bit of a lump, so I'm going to cover over it with a little bit of thread. And then just to finish it out and give it a little bit of a head, or prong, or whatever they call it in bug speak. I'm going to do a little dubbing right up on the front collar. And there you go. Fancy little green drake nymph. We will whip finish it. I'm um, given our water conditions this year, green drakes could take a while before they come off. So nymphing with green drakes is probably going to be pretty successful for a while. Fish will be seeing a lot of them, especially with the way that the water is going to get churned up here. So this could be a really good really slide for this year's conditions. So it's kind of a buggy body, and this one wasn't quite perfect. My legs aren't perfectly even. But the little black bead thorax, the weight portion of it is hidden away underneath the thorax. I kind of like that in high pressure water. I like to have a little bit of stealth to the bead. Um, but the fly fishes really well. Um, you can run it. If you wanted to, you could weight it additionally with more lead wraps or you know a bigger bead or whatever. But this is heavy enough by itself that you can nearly check in with it. So, hope you enjoyed the time. Like I said, I'll have you a full list of the materials. It's a relatively easy tie, and obviously it doesn't take forever to do. So. But it's a good fly, and I like fishing it, so have a good day. Hope everything's...